So 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 Dion Phaneuf is being a royal shit, and now they might lose Mark Matho. He yeah. of the nine. Thought, yeah, Matho should totally. He go. of the nine fingers. They're not going to take Bobby Ryan. Where is Phaneuf from? He's B-B-I? the Dan Blackburn of defensemen. He is the Dan Blackburn of defensemen, and Dion Phaneuf is the Yoko Ono of the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> shot everybody come to their net we, we just have to get more and more pucks to the net we used to talk about in vancouver getting pucks on net and pucks on net well that's the key we gotta get the puck on net what were you saying about putting pucks on net continue to put pucks on net and uh it's just getting pucks on net pucks on net and, and uh driving and making a hard night on them well i'm on tape from once again gita's apartment her palatial Ooh, estate what <laughs> ryan we're making plans over here we're, make, we're making plans what no, you? I want to know why Dion Phaneuf doesn't want to leave Ottawa. It's beautiful. That's it. It's a government town. It open. It closes at five. Is he His not from the West? He's uh, he's from Edmonton, but he lives uh, next to Anna Green Gables house. Okay, that, okay. He's not welcome That's in Alberta all anymore. I'm very confused about like why he's clinging to Ottawa. You know what I'm really confused about? <laughs> how you? We've got 153 of these episodes. Yeah. And you don't know how the show goes because I, I have something to say. Oh, I know. I interrupted you deliberately knowing Oh, that. okay. Sometimes we can mix it up. Fine then. <laughs> Great. The NHL's mixing it up. They're putting a 31st <laughs> team in the league for reasons. <laughs> okay, go back. Palatial estate, well, blah, t- blah, blah. This is your palatial estate. Yes, yes. Me <laughs> mentioning your palatial estate on the 23rd floor has increased the property value like tenfold. That's exactly what I was going to say. You're my realtor. What's the square footage here? 80? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live on tape from Gita's apartment, her place to stay on the 23rd floor. This is Pucks on Net, a Vancouver hockey podcast. Doesn't talk about fantasy or fancy stats. But it is $1,000 per square inch. Yeah. <laughs> it I'd, literally is. Do you think that's what we're worth? Square what? A square? What I, do you? I could sell you for seven cents a pound there, bud. Oh, God. It's, it's exactly <laughs> about that if you do the math. It's $1,000 per square foot, <laughs> <laughs> if not more. Uh, it's, uh, the I'm a savant when it comes to real estate pricing. Welcome to Vancouver. <laughs> I'm like the rain man of like square footage. I could tell you. Show me a listing. The answer, a lot. A lot. Too much. Too much. Uh, we're watch- we're sit- Hockey's over. Uh, Stanley Cup finals are done. We're sitting around watching baseball. The hey, Seattle Mariners. Hey, it's draft week. That's it's a lie. We're looking at long lists of names. Lots of lists of losers. We're not quite ready to put this turkey to bed just quite yet. Well, I, I had a segue because we're watching. Um, we're watching Baseball Night in America on ESPN, which has a lady b- announcer on it. I just want to be there right now. And Gita's back on the show. We all want to be at Safeco. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. It's empty. We could have been there. Mm-hmm. You've promised us a road trip. Uh, listen, things have been up in the air. We could we could each have a section right now <laughs> because the Jays aren't in town. I, or we could get everybody from all around the stadium to sit in one section. It'll look <laughs> crazy. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's for heat. <laughs> listen to last week's show. The oh, Abbotsford Heat. Uh, the Grizzlies tried that a few times, too. They would come and get us. Me and my buddies would sit up in the upper bowl, and some nice lady would come and get us. That's that. They're just dressing for television. Hey, kids, you want to fill her up for TV? <laughs> you want to stack yourselves two at a time to make it look like adult spot tickets? The Cirque du Soleil does that, too. <laughs> they do? Yeah. Do people not go to Cirque du Soleil anymore? I think they do. It's still a pretty hot, big hot ticket. It's over in that uh, fence. Uh, tent. Tent thing. I want to thank you for joining us. Wherever you guys are, make sure you follow us on Twitter, PucksNet Sierra, PucksNet Ka. And if you want to support the show monetarily, throw us a co- throw a couple of couple bucks our way. You can head Is that up. from something? Like I'm, I just don't get. It. You don't remember that? It was. Uh, I, a night I know out. that we've been doing it. Ryan and I tried to buy scalper tickets to go to a Boston oh, that's Bruins a, game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was gonna okay. say we've been bringing that back. So if you're relatively new to the show, at the end of the episode, I'm gonna put that segment on <laughs> the end of this one as like a from the from the. From Blast the archives, from the yeah, because I mean, a lot of people did like that story. It's pretty good. And uh, speaking of newer people to the podcast, uh, Colin Creelman out of uh, Chilliwack, he backed five dollars on Patreon. Hey, thank you, Colin. And if you don't want to be like Colin and you don't want to support the show monetarily, if you want to help us out for free, you can rate and review on iTunes. Also, like Colin just did. So he's given us money and new he's hel- super fan Colin. Yeah. Ideally, a full five stars to make up for former employee Sheila's. What I is t- it now? Is it cookies still, or is I it like ca- coyotes? Oh, I took care of that. 
I reported it as spam. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> All of her emails to me just go to spam, so that that works. Um, I haven't gotten both of your messages, Sheila. <laughs> Uh, so we got to talk about hockey eventually. Um, they're unintentionally funny things are really good. And the Vancouver Canucks uh, exposed list is one of the most unintentionally. The Canucks wouldn't pick players off that list. Well, Willie D would. <laughs> well, I, was gonna, I did the TSN now that the lists are oh, out. And I know we're not going to do fantasy. I did pick my team, though. But, yeah, I was sort of going through by, like, Filtering like most points that guys that were still that's on not contracts. a fancy stat. That's a stat. Yeah, <laughs> but but it, we this, do some stats. I just, he did it with a tie on. This player fancy. is bad. <laughs> this just, player is good. Anyway, but I was just sort of doing it like, okay, well that guy would be decent, but who else is available on this team? And then I pick from that team in that order. Yeah, the Canucks were last. I did not intend on it being that way. Yeah, and when I got down there, I'm like, they're not going to want anyone Anybody. that people think they're going to take. They're going to take like. S- Gons or Spiza? You know, well, I was looking at Boucher or Andre Padan or maybe even Cramarosa because they're going to need some like minor league guys right. out of this draft. Didn't Reed Boucher just sign in the Swiss leagues again? Like, isn't he back? No, that's somebody else. Sorry. Is there not back. a worst exposed I, I, list? I believe you because Reed Boucher was. No, you're thinking pretty, of Shore. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, Drew Shore went back to Lugano. <laughs> I think it could be the worst. Um, maybe yeah. Arizona. That one's pretty bad. There's still a couple of guys floating on that exposed list that isn't yeah, the worst. But I don't know. Like, I honestly was going through by quality of player, and the Canucks were last. I think Canucks and, and the Leafs were the last two teams left. Well, the Leafs are this, like, hilarious. This un- They're too young to have anyone but, good on the but list. But they're a protected list. Yeah, they don't have to. They can just throw the, whoever they want on there. The because- Marlies have more players on that list than the Leafs do. Like, <laughs> Brooks Like and Milan <laughs> Mahalik and all their other castaways. Oh, Brooks Like should be reborn in... Las he'll be, Vegas. He'll be fine. He's very handsome. Yeah. He's a good looking cat. The Canucks exposed list is the little brother that has to play with you at street hockey. You can't play unless the you gotta get you gotta pick a Canuck before you can play in the league next I, year. I wouldn't recognize any one of those players. It's like a major <laughs> league. I never heard of these guys. The <laughs> ones who I have heard of are way past their prime. <laughs> Some of these guys have never had a prime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brendan Gauntz is probably the most likely guy to go. I think he's an economical choice. Um, Do you have to pick a player? You yes. have to. Okay. Yeah, so Ryan's quite astute. They're the little but, brother with scoliosis okay. you got to draft. <laughs> you can then turn around and trade or wave these guys yeah. at camp and stuff. But, I mean, they can still pick a good quality crew of guys that will fight for jobs in the bottom part of a lineup. It, it almost feels like you're doing the team a favor. You're like, all right, I'll pick someone off your team. Well, yeah. tradi- well traditionally these teams are hardly ever when they hit October. Yeah. There'll be like seven or eight guys from the expansion draft that stick with them. But right. most of the roster, like over half of it usually turns over quite a bit before the puck is dropped in October. There's, there's some decent players. Like they're set to be at least better than the bottom 10 teams. or so No, league, see that yeah, you would think so. If you were going to book it straight up the way that it is like cut and dry by the mm-hmm. rules, they're a pretty good hockey. They're a playoff yeah. team. You could argue they are. They'll if beat they the just, Canucks if they just took the best yeah. players who were available on paper off the list. The Golden Knights would be yeah easily better than the Canucks and a, and a quite a legitimate playoff threat. Right. However, Georgie Boy McPhee has learned from other teams in the past, like the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Minnesota Wild, uh-huh. who were competitive right away, but then four or five years later, especially Columbus, fell off the map because right. they didn't have. Any draft picks. You have to remember that you are starting oh, at yeah. fucking zero. You have no prospects in the cupboard. Yeah. So what you do is you make this, the handshake side deal. And there's mm. a lot of greasy shit going on there's, in Las Vegas. There's a lot right now. A lot. And it's smart. George McPhee is a good hockey man. He's the, yeah. he's the devil that they need right now. And he's making... Look, you don't want to lose Matt Dumba. You're going to give me a first round pick. So I take somebody else. That is kind of what's no, happening. Well, yeah, we're definitely going to see some of that. So but they're going to suck balls next year, but it's for the better. Even when I was going through, I was purposely picking guys. So they would come in way under the cap. I was trying to be like hit the floor. You're not. Yeah. You're not necessarily picking the best guy available, but sort of the one that I thought would fit expansion. I still think the roster is better than a lot of because we're at a we're in a different era now. The parity in the NHL yeah. allows even if they don't take the best guys on paper, they're still going to be better. I think than a good, not a, a ton of teams, but definitely at least probably the eight, nine, ten teams. They'll instantly be 
better well, we'll, than... Well, we'll find out even tomorrow. Even if they're making all those deals to get more picks in there as well. Is well, tomorrow when they pick or Wednesday? They have till Wednesday, but George McPhee announced this morning that he's yeah. going to select the team tomorrow. Uh, okay. yeah. And if, the r- yeah, if there's no other... It's only one team, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, there's no like draft. Now, the rumors that I've heard is that there's that Vegas will have at least three picks in the first round this year because of those weird, shady 80s Major League Baseball deals. Okay. So they're they're doing it right. But, I mean, outside of the, you know, they're going to have two lines of guys that could score. But, I mean, that's not a complete team. You don't want to be a total disaster, especially in a market like Las Vegas. You don't want to XFL this thing. <laughs> but... But you also don't want a Columbus Blue Jackets it where you like you're a tweener team for four years and then your guys get old and the prospects cupboard is completely bare. Like you, you want to put some type of system in place where you're going to be able to stack your minor league system. You want to be the new Florida Panthers. Florida what are you Panthers drinking straight out of the bottle. What was that? No, Ryan, Florida, that's for why, sharing. Why are you putting it into a glass like a classy man? It's Florida, a bottle of Jack Daniels. Florida came off the same thing as well, like where they. They were good for a few years. They made the finals, yeah. but then fell off the cliff because no, there was nothing in the That's what I was cover. saying. They're right. probably the best example yeah. of that type of thing. In the extreme, where they actually made a Stanley Cup run, but then were just they went into oblivion for a while. We but there, there's them. some good yeah. names in there. Like, uh, what's his name? I can never pronounce it. Marchessault, Mr. Fancy Jonathan Marchessault. I was really surprised when he was exposed. That he got was like 51, 52 points or something. 30, like almost 30 goals. Yeah, he's, he's pissed. He had a French-speaking interview with uh-huh. TVA, who are kind of becoming the shit disturbers of of uh, the National Hockey League. Okay. I'm affiliated with them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, I don't know why I'm not protected. I thought I was part of their plans. So you kind of have this situation where... But there could be a drawer deal somewhere. There could be a little sweetheart oh, yeah. deal where Yager's going to end up going to But Vegas. don't you think you'd well, let them... Well, he's a UFA, so like, there's a lot of those guys that are just... Yeah, a lot yeah. of the protected list is Thornton just UFAs. There, yeah. there are also people that are uh, that thought they were not part of the plan that might be stuck. Like who? Mark Andre Fleury. Yeah. Well, he is unprotected. But yeah, I was looking at that. Going, uh, Rust is available too. So unless Pittsburgh pulls a deal to and hold on to him, I'd they're going to want Rust over Mark Andre Fleury. And there's I, other goalies. I'd rather take uh, Peter Morazic and Anti Ranta and have a couple was, guys well, in their twenties to platoon. And, and that's the thing, right? Mark Andre Fleury probably thought he was a sure thing in Vegas, he's and a, now all of a sudden he's not. He's going to retire a Penguin. <laughs> you can, you can. He might have another couple of Stanley Cups <laughs> to add to that Hall of Fame up, career. Back, best backup goalie in. NHL history. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hell yeah. Um, well, that was we thought that he was going to go, but then yeah. all of a sudden the Dallas Stars waved every goalie they have. The Carolina right. Hurricanes waved every goalie they it have. It was leaked today that one of the three goalies that is going to get selected will be Kerry Letton, and the Dallas Stars mm. have made a deal with Vegas where okay. they are going to take Kari Letgolz in. Mm. First but that thing, being said, that doesn't mean he's on the roster in October. Right. Anything can happen. Oh, flip thing. him to Vancouver. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. That whole plan of like putting like Picking up Miami and actually using him, I don't want to do that. Well, what are you? Yeah, what are you going to get from Vegas? It's not, uh, you know, it's not part of a big uh, ten up to stars. And they're deal not going to. No, they're not going to. And then, well, that would be Miami. Maybe, maybe Las Vegas wants Chris Tanev. <laughs> and we'll take. <laughs> why are we? Uh, why are we all in such a hurry to to, to drive Chris Tanev to the airport? I I actually I don't. He's a twenty seven year old defenseman who eats minutes. Like if we're gonna, have, if we're gonna keep Jacob Markstrom from. Killing himself. We need a <laughs> we need a few of those guys or, around. Or if you want to keep him from killing himself, just cancel the Connect Skills competition. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna blow both his quads like Vince McMahon did that one time. <laughs> um. Oh man. Um. What was I gonna say? P-Man, Chariot do, race. What? Do you huh? want to explain what I was just doing? Drinking whiskey straight out of the bottle. Um, that was something. It's I, silly season please right don't now. Pour one out on the floor in my living room. <laughs> it's not a forty, Gita. <laughs> Paul and I did that yesterday. Um, this was um, Squampton, one of our favorite pour it listeners. Over the balcony. Uh, he <laughs> sent he sent an email transfer to the Pucks on Net address for twelve dollars so that I could buy both Paul and Dave a Coke on Father's Day. Because he's in the same club as you guys. Uh, That's well, really it's the sweet. same dad. He got around like a. <laughs> <laughs> we all have the same dad, yeah. yeah. And uh, then you said, uh, "Make your, you know, you wanted to have Jack Daniels just pure." So I brought my bottle. Well, it's just I don't get it. You bring, you bring it, and then you're the one sitting there sipping it. You're, <laughs> hey, you got a dad there, chief. I got a dad, and I got a commute on the Millennium Line from North Burnaby to get here. I'm oh, a little stressed no. out. Only in America could I get a job. <laughs> <laughs> 
He I works heard in we coal. Know, we knew a lot of guys who would get on that train. <laughs> there's one right on the couch. Yeah. Here. Old E.I. McClellan. <laughs> oh, that's not I ain't nice. working in coal. <laughs> Renewable energies. I'll be installing solar panels. Oh, is coal not with the Canucks anymore? Is that, <laughs> that gravy train, that ticket train is over? I'm, he, I, ah, jeez, I know. I'm, Can we start talking about how we really feel about him then? We're anti-coal with an A. I'm, a luke, <laughs> I'm lukewarm to coal. Not coal with an E. He's Wait. fine. He's a good guy. He's a good black ace. He he's, fills in. He's part of Donald Trump's big plan. <laughs> Dave's <laughs> just worried he's going to steal his job. <laughs> No, uh, I listen to the Black Ace <laughs> episodes. We good now. That's a good question. That's a good. Uh, I got a listener, qu- a good listener question that was okay. brought in today. Sure. I got a new contract, Paul. He's got. It's good. It's what a do great you mean you resigned, Dave? <laughs> Dave's been resigned. Oh, Gita and I were having these jokes. Uh, <laughs> Multi-year deal. Gita and I had these jokes uh, on the. We were tweeting or texting each other today that that the the podcast was very official and regimented, and there were specific forms you had to enter in, like. The disgruntled former Sheila employee form is TSF092, uh, that kind of stuff like that. Are you smoking a cigarette? Yeah, because this is boring. Oh, shut up. Sorry, I guess you would have had to be part of the joke. It's that when I need a day off or want to change the podcast, I usually give him days notice, unlike somebody did today. Who dropped out today? You were... You, you went like noon, was like, let's move this to Wednesday. Oh, no, I was just, I was sitting around with the fellows at Fat Deli at work uh, at lunch today, and we were just saying that... Some of us were at the office. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was at the office. I was, I, was, I, was, I was snapping necks and cashing checks. Uh, <laughs> no, we were just both, we were all just sitting around talking about all the things that are going to happen on Wednesday. That's true. Yeah. Um, and that would have been a... Sw- it wasn't that I couldn't make it today. I was just saying, hey, if we wait... We'll have more materials. And I would have happily done that. Midweek um, Thursday instead we're morning. We're going to go on to our 25-minute Shane Doan gets cut from the Zona Coyote segment. That's coming up. Um, I did have Stay a tuned for that. <laughs> let's talk about Shane Doan. Is, uh, the most vanilla <laughs> hockey player in the most <laughs> vanilla era of hockey that ever vanilla ever. <laughs> He's still got a mullet. A la mode. He kind of does, actually. Yeah. He looks, he looks like a Kamloops blazer. He looks like 1997. <laughs> He's that cool guy your mom dated who stu- still cruises by the house once in a while at his IROC. He wears um, <laughs> those 90s dress shirts without the collars. That's what he wears to the rink every yeah. day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've been exactly. wearing one of those. What are you it talking looked, about? He looked pretty good in it, actually. Anyway. There's oh, it looks good on you, though. Thanks. On, yeah. On, on the like sub- a young Shane Doan. <laughs> That's that Jack. Oh, what? Oh. On the subject of Dave's question about, or joke about him having a new contract in Black Aces, a listener, uh, Dan McDonald, he goes, which PNN, PON host would you expose in a podcast expansion <gasps> draft? And I, you know what? I, you, could go, you could go a lot of ways here. I was, <laughs> and I want you guys to think about this. It's like, fuck, Mary kill. It is kind of. We have been... Squampton did pose that to us. That we, never, we never did it. Everybody we'll, says kill Dave. Well... <laughs> I'd fight. I'd fight back. Dave, I've known Dave for ten years. I'm, I'm in a merry state with you by this point. Feel I free, people nowhere. on uh, Twitter, to uh, do your own version and add a fourth category I mean, if need be. I, actually, you know what? No, because we can. Pro- I do all three to Paul. <laughs> can I <laughs> marry and kill in that order? Well, it'd, it'd be weird if you did it in another order. <laughs> um, he uh, wants you to marry him first. Yeah, kill make fuck. an honest lady out of him. So, okay. Mary kill fuck. If I Ew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let me just take another swig off this Jack Daniels here. If I was going to expose somebody, yeah. I'm thinking I would maybe expose. Uh, no, because Dave, you Dave's something. G- you expose me, I get picked up right away. Yeah, you're you are you are, uh, you are um, by creeps. Yeah, you were Sammy Vatnin of the Anaheim <laughs> Ducks. You're like, holy, well, let's just pick her up, Paul. You are. Um, you're, I'd say, uh, like a Marc Andre Fleury. <laughs> we, Nobody we wants me. I'm overpaid. <laughs> no, but we want you. But you're like, oh, but geez, it's Sammy Vatnin's out there. Marc, uh, well, P Mac on the street. We I should talked say. about He's, exposing you for years. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting a little old. We've got some people coming up behind him. He's overpaid. Yeah, that's me. That's me. So who would you and, expose? And yet a Hall of Famer. Myself. <laughs> Dave, who do you expose in the in the ex- the podcast draft expansion draft? Probably you. <laughs> I don't think I get picked up because I'm like. Nobody. That's why I would do it. I'm. People are like, well, you're what? like James Neal. You're exposed. We can't. F- it's got to be a trap. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's good. What the? Oh man, they know something. His no. knees. Is he? <laughs> I, got none. I think it's his nose. <laughs> 
I would expose Ryan because people wouldn't trust it. I'd expose myself too because yeah, they would be like, "Well, uh, he's not the most flavorful guy on the show. He's always there. He's always doing his bullshit." Are That's you like, our vanilla? That'd be like getting rid of Jerry. It would it wouldn't you couldn't call it Seinfeld anymore. Speaking of vanilla, um, P Mac, you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah, okay. When it comes to oh, re- right, yeah, this is about money. Sorry, I'm excited. <laughs> Are you whoring yourself out again? No, but I do love image optometry, so be quiet for a second, please. He's two Thank months you. away from whoring himself With, out. hey, <laughs> listen up. With all the options out there, Ryan has just got a lot of options, but Jack is his. But you know what? Why? There's so many people, including local sports pros, they trust their eyes to image optometry. Why do they do it? Well, could be the online prices with bricks and mortar service. It could be the direct billing. Or maybe it's that they're the only ones to offer a doctor's eye exam and a complete select pair of glasses for $89.95. Ooh. Whoa. McGillney un- Morozov. Yes, <laughs> as, we, as we tend to remind people. An unbeatable deal that'll ensure you catch your next match in glorious HD. You know, you know Ryan fixed his grandparents' TV a while back. So it was actually in HD. Mm-hmm. This is like doing that for yourself. Like, and they needed it because they're old and well, they can't see. You know, some of us are getting old. Marc Andre Fleury, P Mac on the street. We need glasses now. I mean, and we're and about what, the same age. I mean, we it's are not a bad. He's got three Stanley Cup rings. We're, we're what have you great. done, Paul? I've got as many rings as Marc Andre Fleury. <laughs> Late season I don't. single A. Still got them. They're still rings, baby. Anyway. So, yeah, what else would you expect from the most affordable eye care chain in British Columbia? Image Optometry, the official eye doctors of the Canucks, Pucks on Net, and PMAC on the street. Uh, they are online. And Gita. And, oh, and Gita now, too, as well. That's right. Actually, a lot of people are going to see Dr. B-Rad out in his respected location. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure longtime listener Kyle uh, just got a pair of glasses there. Uh, way, Latchford. Tell them, tell them that Pucks on Net sent you. You actually really should tell them. If you need to yeah. get your eyes tested, we're not saying anything. We're just saying, <laughs> tell them. And then I'm winking and touching my nose. Like a good James Neal would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, but, yeah, yeah. Imagine they, more for less. You go in person, see Dr. Brad, or online at image.ca, imagine more for less. Image.ca, image. Yep, there you go. I thought those were tears, like the ones Shane Doan has in his eyes. Oh, he's so worried he's going to have to go to Edmonton, and he's not even from there. (laughs) The rumors are the Islanders, I think, right now, aren't they? Yeah, they they would. see somebody. (laughs) They would. They want a bunch of new wingers, apparently. So Uh, let's get Shane Doan in there. There's nothing new about Shane Doan. Shane Doan's really old. He's like Trevor Linden in What do you know about Ray Finkel, anyway? (laughs) No, (laughs) <laughs> don't want Shane Doan. You don't want him. No one wants him. He's too slow. He can't skate. Why what? doesn't he retire? Like he can retire a coyote. He's a stubborn old man. That's how. He, I I don't. I'll drive myself to the he's store. He's on the Ryan Smith goodbye. And tour? where better to do it than <laughs> Edmonton? Well, yeah. There you go. Because the ice needs flooding again. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Gar Snow's been the GM for quite a while? Wasn't he behind the whole like Dougie Waite coming in and finishing his career yeah, as yeah, an yeah, Islander yeah. and he some of those part guys? Of the, uh, they uh, like Alexei their... Yashin train. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he wasn't. But, yeah, it might they like he, they like they like their old guys, but like. Edmonton, it makes sense. They have room on their fourth line for a guy like that. He could play a little bit of power play, stand in front of the net. He's still productive. But they don't need like leadership. They maybe they does do. He, why does he maybe go back to Winnipeg? All kidding aside, Shane Doan wouldn't hurt a dressing room, and I don't yeah. think I don't think he wants to go back to Winnipeg. It's cold there. Shane Doan wouldn't hurt a Vegas dressing room. I, he's too straight edge for Vegas. <laughs> I think he'd be he'd be mad. People, there'd be flamingos in his front yard. He'd be mad. He'd be God damn him it, off. more flamingos! God again. damn flamingos! Yeah, but he could play the game on the strip and then drive back to the suburbs of Las Vegas, whatever they might be. Is Shane Reno? Doan? <laughs> is Shane Doan Hank Hill? Judging by what you guys are just. Well, God damn it, Billy! He does have a those. pretty. He has a pretty flat ass. That ma- that Max Domi kept me up all <laughs> night. <laughs> last Anthony Duclair. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Max Domi and his hip hop music. <laughs> <laughs> damn it, Max! <laughs> uh, so yeah, there, what happened was um, his buddy Boomhauer signed with the Calgary Flames. There's, There's, what yeah, happened was he just got too old. He's too old, and then the Coyotes were like, "Well, we're gonna go with a younger direction." But in reality, like I was saying at the top of the show. The, the, the French-speaking TVA has yeah. said that the, 
the Yotes are are broke, like flat broke, and they're gonna acquire a bad contract like Pavel Datsuk. They've been broke for a long time. It's like a yearly tradition. We go, hey, yeah. when are the when are they gonna become the Seattle Sasquatch? This has got to be it. Ten this years is the ago, year. are you the Coyotes on EI? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Seattle Coyotes is actually a pretty good name, and and there's a lot of Coyotes up here. So, oh, like those guys who get the Mexican people across the border. <laughs> no, that's that's Arizona. No. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, their logo is just like this dude Ooh. with some binoculars. Can I not say that? <laughs> um, uh, I think it's fine. Uh. It's just regionally more appropriate with Trump's yeah stuff. <laughs> anyway, there's I I ran into a coyote last night. I was out for a late night walk around my neighborhood. Down right? by the border. <laughs> Did she dance on the bar? No, it was Shane Doan. He was crying <laughs> in the cemetery by himself. Oh, <laughs> as we all Just were yesterday. Oh. <laughs> but legitimately, I ran into a coyote. I was a little. Oh, I was with my dad yesterday. Rub it in, why don't you? I yeah. actually saw two dads yesterday. I made my dad cry because he's joined your club. Oh, we can take him okay. out with us. Tell, yeah. And we just, we're, we're, instead of playing catch, Paul and I just throw a ball to an empty space. <laughs> All, right. Um, All right, boys. I'll take you guys out for a game of catch. Thanks, Gita. You're but, welcome. But you're a girl. It's okay. I throw like a man. <laughs> uh, there's another good piece of Canucks news um, this week. You lie. New contract for Cramarosa? Better. Oh. A sensible, practical deal for Eric Goodbranson. That I, was a good deal. It's a good deal. You know, it's so funny when... Paul? Well, just I've been saying they need a bridge deal, and everyone's like, oh, he'll pull for more or whatever. But the bridge deal, like, he said, I heard his interview on uh He's lucky Sports to get Radio. the money he got. Yeah, that's the thing. He legitimately sounded, like, disappointed in himself. Like, I know I can be better. Canucks fans yeah. saw this. Yeah, he's still young. He's been in the league for a long time, but he's what, 24, 25? 25. He was one of those guys who came in when he was like 18, right? Oh, three and a half million at 25 is fine. Yeah, and he's got the one year. That's a lot of (laughs) zoppity. The show is what you got deal, but we... It's a lot of sangria at Cactus Club. At least four. He could be a top pairing guy this year in Vancouver if they move Chris (laughs) Tan. Hey, if he saves up, he could buy this place off you, Gita. (laughs) (laughs) Although he's so big. It comes with Bo Horvat. It comes with Bo Horvat. Bo's, isn't, Bo's uh, he's still an RFA. We don't know he's, what he's, he's going to make. Rent, he's been renting out Gita's closet for the last year and a half. Um, because times have been so tough and, you know, we're drinking Jack Daniels straight from the bottle. Cause Only we're, Ryan is. Because yeah. <laughs> we're worried about... I'm, I'm on dry week this week there, bud. I'm not drinking anything. Well, we're worried, like, what's going to happen and what Jim's, Jim, old Jimmy Jam Benning will do. So the fact that we got this deal... Yeah. And you're like, wow, that's... That's really reasonable. That's good. <laughs> That's not offensive. You're like, this is like you won the lottery. That just goes to show you how offensive it's been. <laughs> oh, he'll re-sign Dorset soon. D- well, no, Dorset's exposed. Yeah, he ain't getting picked up. The guy's got bolts in his neck. He's like Frankenstein. Willie's coming <laughs> back to assist. <laughs> I, I picture Willie at home, like, reading the news, li- reading the exposed list in the newspaper because he doesn't know how to use a computer. Aww. And he's like... Look at these guys. These are all my top line guys. What are they exposing <laughs> it's them It's true. For? His work email had several thousand un, uh, unreplied <laughs> messages. As you, why, for the love of God, why are you playing Jason Magna on the first line? <laughs> why? Mail. I went to the st- I went to the road. I checked the hey, mail. Who's that guy's name that we've all forgotten who's supposed to be the next Alex Burroughs again? Oh. Alex Burroughs is exposed. Wow. No. Holy shit. Wow. What was the f*** was that guy's name? Oh. Um, who are you? I don't even know who you're talking Shapu? about. Shapu? Yeah. I just forgot oh. until just now that guy existed. Is he oh, exposed? Yeah. No, I, yeah. no, he's an unrestricted free agent. But he's oh. still, it'll he's appear on, on the exposed yeah, he's list. On the list. That's not the same thing. Michael Shaput, hit the bricks, you little shit. It's like when people are like, oh, good golly, Marlowe and Thornton are un- are exposed by the Sharks. Are you well, making I was, I was mapping out the Canucks lines again at this hockey hockey heavy lunch I was on today. Uh huh. And I forgot that Louis Erickson was on the team. Oh, my God. I and know. And yet he's protected. Well, it's no movement clause, so oh. he can't not be. He's got the NM dubs. <laughs> For another, like, <laughs> four years? Yeah. He's, yeah. He, like Dion Phaneuf, who really f- things up for the senators holy shit what an asshole you you're, know what do you're, not hang around where you're not wanted well but that's the thing he, it's not like he was probably gonna get picked no. up. he's like a new year's guest at ryan's house the guy just won't leave <laughs> he's <laughs> sitting right there come on oh that wasn't new year's that was that was a pucks not christmas party uh, it's oh, not paul we're talking about oh old manny money unrelated you don't know what we're talking about <laughs> um <laughs> 
Don Cherry wrote, I didn't read it, uh, but he was like, oh, here's a reason why Sens fans should like that Dion Phaneuf wants to stay. But it doesn't sound like he wants to stay in Ottawa. He's like, he gave a 12-team list every year. So he's like, I just don't want to go to Vegas. Yeah, he's jamming him up. Well, Elisha doesn't want him going to Vegas because he's going to end up like his buddy Jared Ma- Stoll. Maybe he just knows. <laughs> Allergies. Allergies. He's unwanted everywhere. Nobody wants him. Yeah. Not like, at that price he's not tag. a nice Dion guy. Dion Mana, mana. No one wants you. <laughs> oh. um, I doubt she does really at this point, but... Uh, they got a baby. The old career didn't pan out for her, so she can't upgrade. Or maybe that was just her character in the movie. Was she pregnant in Goon 2? I just pregnant. Yeah, she was pregnant in Goon 2. Yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah. She had Mark Mathot. They like him better. Uh, there's two pieces of Jason Spezza news last week that Gita brought to my attention. One, he wasn't exposed. Yeah, I gotta. I wake up Sunday Whoa, morning. Whoa, why? I know. It was the first thing I check. I get up yesterday morning and I'm like, is he available? No movement clause? Because I was kind of excited if he went to Vegas. Are you going to put a claim into him? It'd be easier to find him. <laughs> <laughs> He's protected. And it was his birthday <laughs> last week. Yes, it was. 34? That's right. What can you tell us about Jason Spezza? That What's he would have graduated with Dave and I. <laughs> no, he would have been a year older than me. Oh, okay. Did you not grad in 01? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But I'm younger. I'm a baby. <laughs> Dave is hanging on to his youth, is what we've just discovered. We're all trying to hang I'm on to our youth. I'm Turkey Tree. <laughs> Desperately. Uh, so, yeah, Dion re- refused to go. Um, the Red Wings exposed Peter Morazic, which is the other, like, what what the hell? But apparently he has a bad attitude and he's inconsistent. Well, last year he didn't put up good numbers, but that wasn't a very good team uh, relative no, to but how they, they But have they have that Jared Como or whatever the f- his name is, the French kid mm. they like. They have another goalie. And mm. Jim- okay. And Jimmy Howard is uh, really good at making sausages. <laughs> Jimmy's really gonna make it sausages. Jimmy's gonna start for Detroit. Jimmy's gonna play in Grand Rapids on a rehab assignment and not look very good. <laughs> the rehab assignment lasted six months. It did. Jimmy's playing for Grand Rapids all the time. <laughs> no one even knows where that is. It's not Cedar Rapids. It's Grand Rapids. <laughs> it's probably a nice vacation from Detroit. Sometimes you want to get away. Well, yeah, you know, you don't want to stay in the Thunderdome for too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're moving to a nicer uh, an arena in a more hip part of town, so that'll be good. Well, I, Seattle looks pretty tonight. It does. It's like, Van- up, well. it's like Vancouver, but with stuff. It's Vancouver. I always tell people it's Vancouver, but cooler. Yes. And but that, also dirtier, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And more dangerous. Browner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't say that. D- dirtier. Not, that's oh, what I mean. Geez. I think Gita's allowed to say that. Yeah. No, that's I mean, her word. <laughs> 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 wow. No, but like, no, but I, I no, it's <laughs> not as green. It's not as green. The waterfront is That's very industrial all the way around. Yeah, and it's like they have a highway going right through the city, which is what they wanted to do in Vancouver. Yeah, I could call on not doing it. But the si- the like, viaducts were in the news the today. S- Puget yep. Sound is very small. Oh, it was. Yeah. They're okay. going to they're gonna rip them out, and everyone's like... Well, they, and then they want to put a road through Strathcona Park, which people are really upset about because we don't have a lot of green space in the downtown. But they're going to tear down the viaducts to put green space up, Gita. No, they're not. They're going to... Put as many condos into that space as possible. Hey, I, on my walk over here, I almost got hit by a cyclist who ran a red light and wasn't using the bike lane and was also going very fast. Was and it this, Gregor? And it, and it was. Yeah, he <laughs> flipped me off. Now, here's, Mr. A qu- Mayor. here's a question. If you're going over the speed limit on a bicycle, which would be difficult to do but not impossible, would you get a ticket? Yes, you're classified as a vehicle. And you can get tickets for everything. You're it's supposed like, to follow the... Yeah, I got cut off this, by a bike today this, driving down Georgia Street. It was probably Greg the Same well. guy. This skinny, this skinny little greyhound of a man, I got to tell you, <laughs> was flying down that hill. I was crossing just on Homer Street and he was going down, right? Yeah. And like, yeah, he almost hit me and this lady. And then she started swearing about Mayor Moonbeam and I got away from her. She looked pretty <laughs> conservative. It was a one-off. I'm like, not all cyclists are bad, but this guy was. Uh, there was a big trade in the NHL this week. Yeah, oh. the Montreal Canadiens finally got the French Canadian, hopefully superstar that they've always wanted. Do they? Ha- is it like a requisite that they're prerequisite? They, they're like, we need a French Canadian top line. They center. haven't had one in forever. Yeah, the Pierre team. Turgeon was the last time they had one. Nineteen ninety six. Huh. Really? Name one. Go. French Canadian. I Come to on, do Paul. my homework properly. I gotta do some research. <laughs> I'm going to get out my calculator. That's why I don't fit in on this podcast and I should be exposed because I occasionally do homework (laughs) and I get made fun of. I can't. Nerd. I think of uh, a lot of Finns and a lot of Russians that were. But no, they tried. They tried. Remember they drafted that Louis LeBlanc from Harvard? Yeah. He he was like, and he was a regular Patrick White. (laughs) Well, there have been quite a few French 
high draft picks in Montreal. But they've never out. they've never had the guy since Turgeon. They never had their yeah, Ryan I, Johansson. I can, I can believe that Turgeon and Damfus. Yeah, that was Vinny so mid nineties. It was. It's been a lot of Saku Koivu and Max Pacioretty. Ugh. And Thomas we... Plakanitz. Mm. Exposed Thomas Plakanitz. Like, you know, they, no, but, and, like, and they protected Pacioretty? And Andre Markov and P.K. Subban. They haven't had a last Subban. They, they've had quite the exotic. I mean, they're, you know. They're not a very French, French team. And they've no. tried it. They've had some, like Bourneval and whatever. Mm-hmm. And Time, times are changing. I don't think so. David <laughs> Dayarnay. Uh, but he wasn't that good. So this is their first real crack at it in a long time. And I think Drew Ann could be. I think this could work out well. This is one of those trades that is actually good for both teams. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, like he, we, I mean, this this has been a roller coaster of emotion with us and Jonathan Drew. And where that we, guy was always supposed to end up in Montreal. Yeah, we well, were all like, fuck that guy. Yeah. And then the playoffs were like, love that guy. <laughs> that guy got, he, that guy's an asshole. Go, go, go pout in the AHL. Hey, he pouted in the AHL, took it on the chin, and now he's in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Remember that shift in the time. I know. We're like <laughs> that could have easily turned into a coach in the junior lightning, like Cody Hudson coaches exactly. the junior yeah. predators. I mean, you're. I mean, he took. It's the, a youth camp. He took the tough love, and it worked out, and he really became into his own. And now, I mean, I don't know. It's like it's hard. It's like a, it's a compliment and a. Bl- it's like a backhanded compliment. We're like. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't want to, ex- we can't expose you, but we don't want to get you, we don't want to lose you for nothing. Yeah. Or so we can't protect you, but we don't want to lose you for nothing. So we're going to trade you to Montreal. So what did they get in return? Uh, they got a uh, first round p- uh, prospect from last year. Uh, okay. Mikhail Sergeyev. Sergi- 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 He's good Sergi- too. Sergi- yeah. He's legit. And okay. he played, uh, he played four games with the Habs last year, but he was on the Spitfires who won the Memorial Cup. And he's... He's pretty highly touted. He's everything you look for in a defensive prospect. Except mm-hmm. he's Russian. Yeah. Which scares the shit out of everybody. That is true. I mean, they do like going home. P Mac, is he a flight risk? Where did he play his junior hockey? Windsor Spitfires. Oh, that the always pl- makes me feel a little bit better yeah. about the guys that come over to play junior here. Normally it would for me too, but he picked the one place that's worse than Russia. Montreal. And my dad is born and raised in Windsor, Ontario. Windsor. I know. <laughs> it's Sorry. a pretty shitty place. Well, both Jason Spencer if, and Kyle Wellwood played in Windsor. <laughs> if he played his hockey. And they ended up, well, Kyle Wellwood ended up in Russia. <laughs> if he, he bolted, <laughs> Gita. <laughs> if, he, if he played in Windsor and now he's headed down to Florida, I hear. And the good, well, I mean, I guess both organizations are decent places to play right now. It's, uh, it's the land- better of the two. It's landlocked, Florida. It's Tampa, brother. Tampa, home of the Hulkster dude. Well, I would guys- have Tampa. It's beautiful. You it's know, not that landlocked. It's not like Orlando. No. You can go to the Metropolitan beach. Orlando. <laughs> uh, and there's also the other positive about Tampa Bay is there are a fair bit of Russians. I think the triplets are down there. And they've... Kucharov, Nemesnikov, and... Uh, Shloshnikov. Shloshnikov. Yeah. It's so racist. Do you know the last one? I could really go for a Shloshnikov right now. You get yeah. them at 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the fidget spinners. <laughs> uh, they're vaping and spinning their fidget spinners at the same time. I got one, <laughs> of, my, I got one in my pocket right you now. Would. You would. I knew. I called that, actually. It's like, <laughs> Ryan will be the first person I know to buy one. So there I was, about 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm at max. <laughs> just, just, I Are mean, they super cheap? Five bucks. Uh, a couple of bucks, and I was buying some candy and a half stack of sour. Do we have pucks on that fidget spinners? God, yes, <laughs> no. we will. No, no. What do you got against fidget spinners? I, I didn't even want the pucks. On you one spent side, too much I money want on the pucks. On one side of the fidget spinner, I want Paul's disapproving face, and on the other, I want my disapproving <laughs> face. <laughs> I just want to spin them. <laughs> um, over one way, it's Paul, like, and then you turn over the other way, and it's like me, like, no. Nah. So, damn kids, get back on your iPhones and stop socializing. Some of us had to grow up a little faster. We didn't have time for fidget spinners. We had nope. to become the man of the house. That's right. <laughs> I had to learn how to vacuum inside the lines. <laughs> and how to clean the pool. First world dead dad problems. <laughs> so, uh, someone's got to skim that fucking thing. Is In it? case people didn't know what the club was, yes, both Dave and I had a... You dead, know, dead. Uneventful weekend, I'm just going to say. No, nope. uh, no, I drank and cried. No brunch for you guys. I, I watched Logan, which is all about like <laughs> father <laughs> relationships. <laughs> I just I just listened, uh, I just listened to... Uh, Cats in the Crate. Cat yeah, Stevens? On a, on a loop. I heard Boyhood was on TV last night. <laughs> I want to watch that movie. Uh, so, P-Mac... As I also go- watched Star Wars uh, Episode 5. 
As we venture away from the dead dad's club. And I cried. Yeah, because uh, you wish that James Earl Jones was your father. How did yeah. you he's still taking Father's Day with your dad. I also spent it with your dad. It was very lovely. <laughs> PMAC, is there a clear cut winner, or do both teams look pretty good in this Tampa Bay, Montreal, Jonathan Bruin deal? Um, I don't know. I'm still just just jealous of your weekend with two dads. Is right. he is he gonna get the? C- <laughs> you guys can have my dad too. Um. He wears is, collared shirts and he tucks them into his pants. He seems like Drew, kind of a nerd. Is Druan going to get a C on his shirt? <laughs> oh, that's a good point, Gita. How quickly? <laughs> yes. If he ha- if he puts up 20 goals and 50 points, which is the minimum of, the, uh, of top six forward <clears throat> output, the Eberle line, if you will. <laughs> like the the Mendo- Eberle line. The, like the Mendoza line. I Mendoza. like it. It's, that's now a thing. The Eberle line. Pat and Penny. Um, Trademark. If he, if he gets 20 goals and 50 points... The next season, next year, you're right. Gita's calling it as captain. He's all, the new Geek Arbano. All it's gonna take yeah. is all it's gonna take is Max Pacioretty getting shit on by the media. by the French speaking media. You know who we like? That guy who answers our questions. And he's got <laughs> he's got this French to English dictionary. He's like, uh, je joue hard dans le salle de net. Je m'appelle Max Pacioretty. And they're just like, this guy. Uh. And then Matt, Jonathan Drouin sounds like rock cuisine in the corner. <laughs> He's just speaking eloquently. It's like, we're just going to give that to Jonathan Drouin. <laughs> <laughs> now, he could buckle under the pressure. There is a... There is a lot. I was thinking about that, too. Yeah, but he's coming into that team. Like, he's not an 18-year-old. He's been in the league for a while. He's faced adversity. Like he's 21. been sent to the minors. He's been to Syracuse. He's a regular Xavier LaFleur. He's, he's <laughs> dealt with he Steve Eiserman. Yeah, but, you know, when, when he pulls this bullshit where he asks for a trade... Or doesn't want to report. He's grown up. No, but when he doesn't want to report to Syracuse, yeah. there's a, one reporter from the St. Pete Times Forum and a blogger there to ask him. Us. Yeah, the, we're there. Flew down. You are asking him the hard questions. Yeah. But when he goes to Montreal, there's like it's like a, an yeah, election it's, it's circus. It's all day, every day. Yeah, the TVA it is going to be over there. It's he's July got, 18th. He's got Deeren right up in there. He's got Stu Walters up in there <laughs> asking him the hard-hitting questions. Like, he's, Do you own any winter clothes because you played in Florida and you're going to freeze your ass off? And he's like, yeah. And then he leaves in like shorts and flops because he doesn't. It's just a wide <laughs> shot. Like He had the dress shirt on, but it's just like, <laughs> it's like a news Joe report. Fresh shorts. P Mac, you looked a little upset there when we were talking about reporters asking the hard questions. Oh, just, yeah, he was name dropping reporters oh, we, that you asked didn't questions. Drop Paul's Paul McClellan, formerly employed. Paul I, that's still He's my job. He's currently employed by the NBC. Welcome. Peacock employed Paul McClellan, <laughs> asking him the tough questions. Strutting, what's that? Flapping his feathers, yeah. <laughs> messing his stuff. You've been in town for a while. Have you been to Chez Paris? Would you like to go? <laughs> <laughs> I frequent it. Um, is that like plumage? Is that the, the it's peacocking? The, allegedly, it's the best gentleman's club in the country, and it's Allie. located in Montreal. That's a reasonable place where I think the best. That's where I think the best strip club would be. Do you have be. a t-shirt from there or what? I don't know. I haven't gone there to ask Drew and the hard questions They don't yet. sell them online yet. <laughs> but when they well, do. road trip Two, out please. there, you can get a shirt and a coffee, and we'll head back. We'll head, no, we'll, no, we'll get media accreditation. We'll go to the Bell Center. Ask the hard questions to Drew Ann. Ask him where his pants are because he's wearing flops in those shorts because he just came back from Florida. Flops, brah. What are you doing wearing flops there? <laughs> uh, he's going to go from having Hulk Hogan watching him to like Guy Lafleur. It's oh. going to be a different f***ing environment. I love that John of the Drew Ann, brother. There's no Tesla coils when you score. Just <laughs> scored. He was on the wrong side of the ice, huh? He got the goal, but there was the wrong kind of goal. <laughs> and he's, you, know what the, you know what he does have, though, all kidding aside, that he hasn't had before? Carey Price. Yeah, that's, that's be true. Nice. That team is so bad. They're so bad, but no one notices. No. no. Well, we noticed the other year. You got you to give it to them. Like We've kind of forgotten about the nonsensical, and now as we're looking at it lopsided, P.K. Subban, Shea Weber trade, uh-huh. and now we're like, oh, you made a good deal for what you need. I mean, you still could use yeah. a P.K. Subban, but hey, hey. One for one. We're back. Mark Andre or Mark Bergerman's back. Uh, back to even. I think he's a terrible general manager. Who's the worst general manager in the national? Mark Andre Bergeron might be the worst. P Mac. I would do my homework before making any sort of claims. Oh, Mark Bergevin, not Mark Andre. That that guy's a defenseman in the Swiss League. Yeah, Mark Bergevin. I'm gonna go with Joe Sakic. Yeah, it hasn't oh. gone too well for Joey Sakic over there. He's kind of got like he kind of. I'm like. 
He's like, kind of like if Trevor Linden got the GM. I'm like, why yeah. are you? Why are you a GM? But like, he's got a lot of good young talent. They just can't do anything. He's. But did he acquire that good young talent? Yes. Or was that there? For, okay. He's only been the GM there for a couple of years. There's been guys before him. But was he was the one who hired Patrick Waugh? Yes, they're they're buddies. Yeah, but I mean, he. Well, had that's the thing. It's like if Gino was coaching next season. Ojic? Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Hang on. <laughs> oh, no, oh. that would be I, oh, fun. I hit oh. it. I hit it. Be, um, but he's that. got all those. He's got all those hockey. Pl- all those young young players, but yeah. he hasn't moved any of them. Right. And you think that he doesn't know how to? Matt, Matt Duchesne's been moving out of town more often than the Arizona Coyotes. Every time I look at the new, the hockey blogs, it's Matt Duchesne's getting traded and the Coyotes are moving. Yeah. One of those two things happens, the earth is going to spin right off its axis. Yeah, I'll believe it. I don't believe it. I don't think Matt Duchesne will ever be traded. And he, I don't think the Coyotes are ever moving out of the zone. Well, because Gary Bettman's got him on EI, his own EI. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's another trade that we didn't talk about, and that's the first time in seven years, is it five, four years, let's do some math, it's 2017, uh-huh. the Calgary Flames have a goalie. No, they don't. Disagree. Nope. Wrong. Bad. Nope. They have a goalie. He's not that good. He's, oh, he's better than Brian Elliott. Overrated? Elliott. No, I don't know if he is. Did, did, Brian Overrated. Elliott is going to go down in history as the one goalie that he was pulled after one shot on goal in the playoffs. Because he looked so bad. That was a bad coaching decision. Well, to start him at all. Yeah, that's this guy true. Guy's Frankie fragile. Why'd you put him in? No, Mike Smith is one of these guys. He's a goalie on a bad team, so he doesn't get the criticism that he deserves. He's a leaky rebound, seven-hole, non-winning, average goalie at best, who's now thirty-five years old. Well, you and also, you're locked into him for two years. You also got to remember that the 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 Coyotes were so bad that they would only play defense. Like, they were one of the stingiest teams, and that's why he had those numbers. Right? Now, if we remember a very memorable moment from this year's podcast, Paul, is that one of the problems with Mike Smith is that he's um, emotional. Yeah, no, <laughs> he was starting to feel it with the uh, Coyotes losing last season. So, yeah, I, he wasn't getting a lot of support. That's the thing. Like, I, I still think he could be a good goalie. The age worries me a bit. Oh, um, that's but my I, biggest I concern. I want to see him behind a team that can compete yeah that's gonna focus and, on scoring uh, a goal and i've seen him play some good games i don't watch the coyotes that often though well you're yeah. missing out man and and when i do see them a lot of the time they're playing the vancouver canucks so i don't know if that's the <laughs> best judge judgment uh you know bar to to compare them wouldn't yeah. it be great if your scouting reports like i saw mike smith four times this year against the canucks he, still in his head he looked amazing <laughs> he's gonna get the vesna i can feel it it felt like for a while the canucks were acquiring uh, guys that would just show up against them you know, yeah. or other teams I've seen do that. They've had really good games when they're playing that specific team. But Curtis Sanford. And then if you take the Canucks out of the <laughs> take the Canucks out of the equation, all of a sudden they're not as successful. But what did you, uh, you just point out there? Oh, uh, not to interrupt, but the the Seattle Mariners one of the most hyped things about them this year, and they're thirty two and thirty six, and this would be hyped. Thirty three and thirty six. Thank uh, you, Ryan. Is the uh, <laughs> is the deep is the deep fried uh, chili lime grasshoppers? That's correct. Yeah, and uh, they're just the ESPN Baseball Tonight announcers are, are tried them, and then a couple of them went back for seconds because I think they're pretty good. Huh? What would you rather get, the garlic fries or the grasshoppers? Fries. I, I get both. It's a nine inning game. <laughs> it's a long game, baby. But apparently, the grasshoppers sell out after like the first inning. Very popular. Yeah. Eating bugs is very hip these days. It's very now. Yeah, I've I've done some uh, video journalism on the subject, but I'm not. When you, all those years you were living in Africa, you didn't try anything. I like ate that? a lot of bugs, but just because <laughs> they mixed in with the rice and the pasta <laughs> and whatever, and you didn't have a choice. What's the weirdest thing you ate when you were in Africa? Okay, grasshopper or on cricket. purpose. Yeah, sure, on purpose. Um, the thing I didn't like the most, which wasn't that weird, was chickens' feet, and I know people do that here. Ooh. Yeah, the actual feet, not the legs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had like boiled it. So over here, I think you'd typically Ugh. get it fried. Yeah, so it's just any, like, well, anything fried is good. <laughs> yeah. It's just batter. But yeah, Did I'm they sure. take the nails off. The no, they just, no, you're just like, you're only eating the like oh, yellow part okay. off the bone or whatever. But, uh, I, I'm sure there are some weird uh, crocodile, ate crocodile. I was there. That now, was good. Now Ish. you said I've had alligator ate on purpose. What's the weirdest thing you ate well, by just, accident? I did eat a lot of bugs just because there were, there were bugs and you couldn't pick them out of the rice or uh, pass. Or even I remember someone had some tapioca pudding <laughs> and a bunch of ants got into it. And we were just like, ah, screw it. We haven't had 
you know, we don't get stuff like this that often. Let's just eat it. Survivor kind of And you can rules. just see the ants in it, and you try to pick some of them out, but oh, uh, okay. you eat them. Uh, I'm going to go to a couple questions from Twitter here, and Jack Manning asks, which exposed player should the Canucks try to acquire from Vegas? If any. Luongo. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter Shinkarek. Oh, is he exposed? He's exposed. Expose him. Uh, there is some, there's some really good players that are exposed um i would say brian rust yeah i mean if they if 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 he's he might be the most desirable player but yeah what how would that you know why well, would he wind eat. up in vancouver yeah, yeah i guess if you want anybody so, yeah I think they're gonna have a lot of goalies all of a sudden though because ryan miller's not carter i like carter hutton out of st louis he's a, he's unprotected he's a goalie i like him yeah and well, based on what he's, he had a good he had a fine year i like oh uh philip like two games he played no no the uh who's the backup for nashville that's he had a half good year because you see sorrows we saw a lot of him on the road games in the finals he lo- he was sorrows about all those goals he <laughs> put in. well he wasn't the problem uh, he had to come in and finish the games <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love to get Jonathan Marchessault so because I really liked following him last year. And Fancy maybe, stats. And a guy like uh, Matt Calvert is exposed, and he had a good – he's kind of like a non – he's like a better, less expensive Derek Dorsett. He's kind of like a Yannick okay. Hansen. Yeah, and I really He's like, a honey badger. Yes, and he had a really good year with Columbus, so that would be my pick. Okay. And um, the VHL Sim League asks, which is the biggest surprise on the list of exposed players for any team? And I was saying, I was looking at Jonathan it. Jonathan show. It's got to be what's happening in Florida. They have their captain mm. exposed. They have Jonathan Marcheseau. Yeah. And Mackenzie's like 37 or something, isn't he? Like, that's no, not a surprise. No, he's not too old, but he's like a He's fourth. that weird fourth line captain. I don't so like that. Who are they protecting? I do. Look, well, not Yarm or Yager. Jonathan Uberdo, yeah, Sasha Barkov. They got a lot of young, like 20 somethings yeah. they have to protect. But yeah, I, I don't mind the fourth line cat. If he's the leader in the room. Put yeah, but the C you, on him. yeah, but you got to worry about like then you got to worry about your captain going down to uh, Portland, Maine, and he doesn't even live there. <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah. not, they're not too many big surprises. Um, Chris Russell, Dan Hamhuis, they got it. I find yeah. it, I found out that Dan Hamhuis got exposed. Oh, did he waive his no movement clause? I guess you, so. that is not a good spot for the Hamhuis family. No, we uh, we're gonna we're gonna try. Uh, I don't know. You everybody like, has these like assumptions about Vegas, but apparently, like once you're off the strip, it's a pretty like. Why would you get off the strip? If it's you're a Dan Hamus, you can buy a house. Yeah, twenty thirty it's, minutes out of town. It's, it's going to be a beautiful little you know. That's the thing. It's not like you're moving Arizona into a hotel. You're moving into a house. It's a weird city because it has no earthly business being there. It doesn't make any sense. Like it's not a major city that's near like a no. port or a body of water. Like usually cities are near rivers. It or, doesn't even feel like a major city it's like a major street yeah really i've never i've never well, been there's to off strip casinos yeah, they but that's like the old vegas versus new vegas it's not a big place you can walk the entire thing in a day not now not nowadays with climate change you'll probably die yeah yeah <laughs> Jason uh, should come on the show. He's got a good story about that. Hotels are closer than they appear. Oh, that's or the, not as close as they appear. No, that's exactly. What, that's what everybody says. It's like, oh yeah, it's just right there. It's, it's not, but what were you gonna say, Paul? We're able-bodied that we could. We are. We're healthy. Yeah, we're. This is something that old people tell me. My mom's got gout, like in both feet, probably sometimes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, she's got the gout again. Uh, Las Vegas, we, yeah. We can walk from Treasure Island to Luxor. Well, we'll get our chance when we go see the Canucks play the uh, Golden Knights and give them the old golden shower. <laughs> Brendan Gantz will be on that up in the press box. Anyway. Take that, Gantz. Um, We're taking the, the podcast nope. on okay. the road for reals. Uh, Mike Scallon also. Oh, they're going to think that's a bomb, that whole setup. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it's getting there. I've thought about bringing podcasts in a bag on the road like when I've flown, and it's yeah. just like, it's just wires and, <laughs> and Jack Daniels bottles. Just don't let me carry it. We're screwed. What's that, a bowling ball candle in there? All right, let's, let's move it along. Uh, Mike Scalen also asked, but who signs old fart uh, Shane Doan? And I think we summed up maybe the Islanders. And th- I think the Oilers are a candidate. I think Calgary's a candidate. I think Aginla and Doan will end up on one of those Alberta teams. I hope Aginla goes back to Cowtown and ends his career there and just... He should just retire. Because he's... Yeah. He's still fast and he's still okay. He's like a power play specialist now. Define fast. I don't know. NHL he, fast? Who knows? Or like fast for like a normal person? He could outrun <laughs> me. He could run, He could beat you in that race he's to not, Treasure Island. He's not on my list of people that I'm better at hockey than. No, because they played on the 1997 World Junior Team. He should not be playing in the league anymore. 
<laughs> that's the truest thing I've heard today. <laughs> that's beautiful. And that's what we'll wrap up the podcast this week. Um, again, I want to thank... Oh, shit. Where'd my phone go? If going? you played hockey before Everclear's second album... <laughs> Once again, I want to thank Colin Creelman for uh, pledging $5 on Patreon and uh, reviewing the podcast. And if you want to do either one of those things to help support the show, that's great. And uh, and that just follow us on Twitter at PucksNetCR, PucksNetCa. And Paul? If you're on Patreon, you get the extra five minutes for paying segment that we're about to record. And I'm going to tell my Las Vegas fun fact that I did not mention earlier. Cause oh, that's cool. You guys just kept going. I like that. So I there's a little jump in. So there's a he little knows where the loosest slut slots are in town. <laughs> that's not quite <laughs> it, but if that's what you're into, you will never know if you aren't a Patreon subscriber. Just pull that arm all day. Pull so it, yeah, pull it, 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 pull it. Patreon.com/slash pucks.net. I was going to talk to you about uh, PMAC. Well, maybe recording our uh, hockey records uh, episode this weekend. Well, what, uh, okay, I guess we're doing something. This no, I got to talk. We're to you. free this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we got plans. You yeah. and I got big. We're washing our hair. I see how it is. All right, well, it's... Did uh, we don't listen to music? <laughs> it's hockey music. We'll go to Five Minutes Whoa. or Peg. <laughs> <laughs> the anthems. Yeah, we'll Nothing be on, but Gary Glitter. We're going to be on the... We'll be, if you need us, we'll be on a patio somewhere and try to find our number. All right, so here comes Today. Five Minutes for Peg. So I, we go down to Rogers Arena. Just ice, to check it out. Yep. And I'm going to say, hey, we'll look around for these free bins of tickets, you know. No, not there. Okay, we'll get it out and we'll, uh, we'll uh, ask, talk to some scalpers. First off, the first scalper was very rude to me. Yeah. Remember like him? how much you probably low, a couple bucks. A couple. Okay, I walk up. He you goes, probably lowball them. He, no, no. We walk up. We didn't even offer There's them two anything. scalpers. There's two scalpers on the corner up on Georgia. Yep. And he goes, you looking for tickets? I'm like, yeah, what are balconies going for? And he's like, oh, this guy has the balconies. He points to this big fat guy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what do balconies go for right now? And he, all he says is, couple of bucks. And I'm like, wait, what? He goes, a couple of bucks? Couple of bucks? And I'm like, all right, thank you very much. And we just kept walking. <laughs> Should have offered him a couple of bucks. And I was like, I, I wish I had 350 on me. I would have checked him at it. I'm just a really big Craig Cunningham fan. <laughs>